Um, and just to plug one more thing before I start really talking, some of the numbers I'm going to refer to in this talk come from Left Business Observer, a monthly newsletter which is um, written and published mainly by my husband, Doug Kenwood, um, and I assist as an editor. And I would urge you to subscribe. It is inexpensive, and in these challenging political and economic times, you need it more than ever. Um, political economy that is up to date, and it is it comes out monthly, so you really really need it. Um, this conference is so well timed, I cannot believe it. Um, I'm sure you've been talking all weekend about the March Fourth actions all over the country um, to protest tuition hikes and budget cuts. These were so widespread and so visible that they were even covered by the mainstream media. Um, so you can tell that they really happened. <laughs> this happened all over California, obviously, where protesters shut down highways, freeways, streets, parts of campuses, as well as doing um, respectable stuff like rallying lawmakers in Sacramento. Um, but the momentum was national. Um, University of Virginia, where a banner read, take back your classroom, your workplace, your life. SUNY Purchase was occupied at the Student Services Building. Here in New York City, uh, where students at public schools have been very active, students at Hunter walked out, students at Brooklyn College had a teach-in and dropped a banner which read, we have history, we have the masses, CUNY is ours. Um, and, um, let's see. Those, those protests have also been linked up to um, protests of subway service cuts and threats to abolish free metro cards for students. So it's been um, a, a really a growing defense of the public sector that's been going on here in New York. University of Oklahoma, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, University of Illinois, Chicago. And this was really not just a one-day event though it was approached that way in the mainstream media, it's really been a growing movement around the country for the last several years. On the fringes of some of these protests, you hear some cynicism about whether education even buys anything anymore, and um, a kind of resurgence of an attitude that was pretty popular in the 60s, um, a, um, a new left hostility to institutions and expertise. Um, if you look at the numbers, that kind of thinking, as passionately and eloquently stated as it often is, um, and as viscerally just plain fun as it can be, seems a little misplaced. I'm going to say a little bit about why. Um, what's really inspiring these protests and drawing so many students to them is this reality. More than ever, um, the way college is set up is a scheme to redistribute wealth and income um, that is, to redistribute it from poor people so the rich people have it even more. Um, it is more critical than ever to making money, having a college degree, contrary to a lot of, you know, some of what we've been hearing around the protests, that the degree doesn't buy anything. Um, it is more critical than ever to making money, and yet you need a dizzying amount of startup capital to get that degree. Here's what I mean. A college grad now makes 83% more than a high school grad. Folks with graduate degrees make 159% more than folks with just high school degrees. Um, so it, um, it is a really, really significant difference. Yet the cost of this credential is more prohibitive than ever. Inflation in the area of college tuition dwarfs any other kind. It is more than four percent, more four, more than four times the amount of regular inflation. That is for consumer goods, food, any of those everyday items, um, and it is twice the famously astronomical rates of medical inflation. Uh, you know, we hear a lot about the crazy inflation of healthcare. Um, actually, the um, the inflation rate of higher education is twice that. Um, just to give you an idea of what that exactly looks like um, to all of us, um, essentially, um, higher education has left family incomes in the dust. 
public universities. I'm just going to talk about public universities. I don't really care about the private sector that much. Um, so just to, to let you know, I'm um, from um, to, um, public, the cost of public university tuition is from 12% of family incomes um, to 25%. So um, twelve, so you know, twelve percent some ten years ago, about twenty five percent now. Two thirds of students now graduate with massive debt, which is not news to any of you. Average of twenty three thousand dollars in two thousand eight, which is up a mere, which is up a whopping twenty four percent from just four years ago in two thousand four. The federal Pell Grant the largest source of financial aid for low-income students. Um, ten year, actually, in 1990 to 91, the year I graduated college, covered 76% of tuition at public four-year colleges. Today, it covers less than half um, of tuition at public four-year colleges. So who's getting the most out of the fabulous upward mobility strategy, fabulous proven um, mobility strategy known as college, rich kids. Just to get an idea, back in 1970, looking at kids from the top quarter of the top 25% of the income distribution, only 55% of those kids got college degrees. Now, 95% of them do. Um, how much has that increased for the children of folks in the bottom quarter of the uh, income distribution? Um, that percentage, kids at the bottom of the income distribution getting college degrees, has gone from 6% to a big fat 9%. So we're really, um, really not much gains there, and, um, and the reason is the astronomical um, and ever-increasing tuition. So we're really right to be protesting these tuition hikes. Um, in, if, you, if you look around the world, um, a lot of the, the demands um, are um, really similar. People all over the world are protesting the um, cost of college tuition. Um, it, they've been doing it um, throughout Africa for years, um, Europe, Europe as well. Um, in, um, in many European schools, in building takeovers similar to ours, they're demanding the abolition of tuition altogether, which, you know, is... Um, actually a really great idea. And the idea of free higher ed has a history even in this country. The um, founder of CUNY in 1947, um, a fellow named Townsend Harris, said, open the doors to all. Let the children of the rich and poor take their seats together and know of no distinction save that of industry, good conduct, and intellect. And indeed, all students attended City College free until 1976. Um, and um, that where um, the idea of free tuition um, was, was shut down by a national right-wing movement um, that was um, led by a number of people, including Ronald Reagan, um, who's, um, and, who, and one of his um, major intellectual advisors said at the time that this was a really important political goal because an educated proletariat would be like dynamite.